I was praising the high press. I was praising the high press. But when it got to the point when our center, our defensive mid joins in the press and goes all the way up to the goalkeeper to press and we don't have numbers back and we constantly get beat over the top, there's a fucking problem. And yes, it can be down to the players in terms of their lack of performance and lack of consistency. But it's also do it's also it also comes down to the tactics too. And you know, Mark Robinson really does like his high press, but it gets to a point where that high press becomes too much, especially when you have your freaking defensive mid going all the way up to the goddamn goalkeeper to press and not have numbers back, which is what led to the first goal essentially. Yeah, full time whistle already. I mean I've already gone into my analysis two minutes before the game freaking ended because it's already over, but yeah, that becomes a problem, right? When the high press it gets to a point where three players are, are pressing at the same time. Uh, well, maybe not at the same time, but two players are pressing and one player is still high. Like Robinson was still high. Asal was still high. When Hardigan was sprinting up to the keeper before that first goal. Uh, and then the second goal, Woodyard goes down. Uh, I still don't think it was enough for a foul looking back at it, but you know the AFC Wimbledon bench were incensed and completely berated that wasn't called a foul. But... You know, AFC Wimbledon were just caught sleeping after that. They were com complaining about the foul. And then freaking um, number 17, I forget his name, I'm sorry. Uh, Matty Blair just had so much space on that outside. Ayuba Sal very slow to track that run. Like I said, um, you know, Asal would be high, would be pressing a lot. But, um, you know, yeah, maybe it's also down to Henry Lawrence to get to that one. Uh, Henry Lawrence a little bit central. Uh, he tried to recover. And he did a, a decent job in trying to prevent Blair from getting cr the cross off. But Blair, very good first touch. Heavy down, uh, heavily down towards the uh, the touchline and gets the cross off back post. AFC Wimbledon's defense scrambling. And then the substitute, George Lloyd, I think, uh, born in Cheltenham area. So, yeah, one of their own, George Lloyd, does get on the score sheet back post. AFC Wimbledon's defense scrambling in that instance. And I think maybe a Ubisal should have been a little bit more aware of uh, of the positioning there of Matty Blair. Just, you know, ran up a good 20, 30 yards to receive that pass. Maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit with the 20, 30 yards. I'd say 15 to 20 yards, but yeah, two goals in quick succession, really. AFC Wimbledon have a bit of a tendency to, to drop their heads a little bit after a goal, and and they are, they're all always susceptible to giving up another one after, after momentum has shifted. And... You know, considering that this is a young side and, uh, you know, these players don't really have too much mental fortitude instilled upon them. This is where we need someone like a Lee Brown. This is where we need uh, one or two other signings that we could have gotten in the transfer window. But, you know, Mark Robinson and, and the staff focused heavily on youth talent and trying to, to get rid of that debt, that's that, that uh, Plow Lane Stadium debt as quickly as possible by not spending too much money in the market. And, uh, you know, all these decisions are coming to bite us in the ass, really. And throughout the season, I've always been Robbo in, Robbo in, Robbo in. Let's just ride it out. Let's just ride it out, you know. These players uh, have a newfound, even though they haven't been in good form, these players have a, a sense of, of togetherness and unity that we haven't seen with other AFC Wimbledon sides with a lot of lone players and stuff. To be fair, those lone players have helped kept us up. Joe Piggott's, the Joe Piggott's, the Aaron Ramsdale's, they've helped kept us up. But um, at this point in the season, I'm now leaning more towards Robbo out than I am Robbo in. Bless Robbo. Hell of a guy. Still learning, still growing as a manager. But I'm now starting to turn. I'm now starting to turn that dial. When we got Wally, when we got Glenn, we stayed up. Middle of the season transfers, we stayed up. Uh, middle of the season uh, manager transfers, we stayed up. And um, I think now's the time. I think now's the time. I got nothing else to say. I got nothing else to say. Nightingale and Hennigan, they played, ver they, they played well for the first 20 minutes of the game, winning headers. Nightingale getting stuck into challenges. But towards the latter half of the game, they just look clueless. The back line looked clueless. Constant threw balls over the top. 
constant high line. It seemed to me like they were playing an offside trap throughout the game. Never worked. They never changed it up. Freaking four or five times throughout the game, you saw through balls over the top to Alfie May, Andy Williams. They didn't change it. They didn't. They didn't change their uh, their offside trap. They kept playing it. Didn't work. Never worked really. They didn't switch it up to a five in the back. I thought maybe they could have uh, brought on uh, Paul Kalambay maybe for um, Depa Mabude. Um, to be fair, Mabude did. He was uh, spotty, but he played very well when he was on his game. Took a couple of heavy touches um, to put himself into space on the wide areas. But I think maybe he could have brought on Kalambay for uh, for Mabude and play a five in the back. Uh, I think the substitution. Robinson for Cosgrove wasn't a bad idea. Cosgrove did play well. He won a few headers, but, you know, bring on Zach Robinson. He's a little bit more of an athletic version of Sam Cosgrove. You know, good on the holdup, good headers, uh, headers being won. But I think, you know, we we went, we just did not prioritize the defending, really, uh, in terms of the substitutions. And overall, the style of play from AFC Wimbledon was very, very attack-minded. And um, we got caught. On several occasions, we got lucky that uh, Cheltenham didn't convert their chances. Like Alfie May took a few touches away from goal when he got played over the top on one instance. Um, and then when Williams was played over the top in the first half, he had to check up his run. And then Nightingale recovered and forced a shot uh, from out from Williams from outside the 18 rather than getting getting uh, through on goal. But eventually, it, it bit us in the ass. Uh, and 3-1 is the verdict. So that's all I have to say. Uh, man of the match for me for AFC Wimbledon. Nothing else to say. Man of the match in total, Callum Wright. Couldn't couldn't contain him. Got nothing else to say. Thankfully, we still have a game against. Uh, still have a game in hand against Fleetwood and Morecambe. Fleetwood only have uh, one point out of the last two games. Morecambe have zero. And uh, AFC Wimbledon have one game in hand. So if we can get a point against. Uh, Cambridge, which even that is pushing it, even that is stretching it. I think we got to get a win against. We got to get a win against Cambridge, actually. Surely we got to get a win against Cambridge because we're going to be playing against uh, Sheffield Wednesday, Charlton, and Milton Keynes. Those are our next three games. Tough ask. That being said, I'm done rambling. Thank you guys. See ya.